What is going on everybody and welcome back into Byerly Studios. If you are keeping up with some of the art that we're producing here on Byerly Studios YouTube channel then you'll know that we are in the midst of an amazing project here. It is the Goliath Bird Eater Tarantula Diorama. This thing is absolutely incredible. If you haven't been able to go back in the, the channel and check out the previous videos which are some are bite sized, some are longer format. Uh, then definitely go do so. In this video, we're technically picking up the project that we left in the last video. We will use monster clay, medium softness, to create an amazing spider body. The spider body included the actual abdomen, the carapace, which is the main portion of the, the body here, and also the coxa, which is the first joint of the actual legs themselves. We went ahead and created just a little divot for each leg individually, and I actually had originally built an armature system, so this was self-supported while we created this in the studio, and then I went ahead and cut all those off because I decided to make the mold in two different stages. So in this stage, we're, in this video, we're gonna create a mold of this. Uh, so just like Monster Clay, something new that we were trying here in the studio, which I absolutely have been looking forward to for the longest time. I'm glad I was able to order some and get my hands on it. We are gonna be using another product that I've never technically used and I've known about it forever, is Smooth On uh, Mold Star Series Platinum Silicone Mold. Uh, I bought, it comes in two parts here, A and B, uh, and these are uh, one pound each. So. So weight of one pound each, and it comes in a little kit, uh, comes in a little box like that with some instructions, and it shows what you can do, and it shows easy instructions on the back of the box. That's how it comes off of Amazon. This is not enough to do the entire project, I don't think. Uh, but what we're gonna do is I had a plan to do a, a one part cut mold of this spider. So there's a lot of details in this. I put some little micro hairs all over the body, things like that. And I wanna make sure I can capture as much of that as possible. So I'm gonna probably do a, a, a just a brush on silicone base on the item before I sink it down into the mold to be finalized. So technically I won't probably do the mold till tomorrow and that's okay. But what I plan to do is uh, early tomorrow morning when it warms up outside, I'll be doing the mold in my shed. I'm not doing this inside the house. I don't want the smells in the house. So there's some reasons for that. My wife is pregnant, <laughs> exciting times. But we're not doing anything stinky inside the house. So we're gonna do this out in the shed where it's warm enough to do so. Uh, it has to be a minimum of 70 degrees, it said, I believe in the instructions, and it is warm enough outside to do that. So we're gonna do this outside. So during this process, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna suspend this, not in this, yeah, I know, not in this. I went out and bought this at Home Depot. It's a warm quart contain plastic container. It's a throwaway, $2 maybe or so like that. And uh, it's not big enough. The spider body does fit in the one quart container, but it leaves such a thin line across the bottom that I'm afraid that overusing it will create a tear or maybe the suction of the item coming out will tear that and then it will just be ruined. And I'm not willing to waste the time to do it all over again when eventually that that this creation here won't exist anymore. I'm gonna reuse the monster clay for other things. So I know I'm randomly here, guys, don't judge me. So instead, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this up to the side for another project. And what we're gonna use instead is just a two liter bottom of a bottle. Um, it's like a Pepsi container or something like that to the logo off, no copyright or nothing like that. You know how people are. Anyway, so we're gonna use this and it is substantially larger. So what we'll be able to do is we're gonna sink it um, sink it in. Uh, probably gonna do, so I don't want any air pockets. So th these right here could create technical air pockets here. So we're gonna probably sink it in uh, probably like that. And then we're probably gonna angle it slightly, maybe like that, just like that maybe. It's gonna be a cut mold. So it'll be cut out of this two liter when we're done. And I'll, I'll probably figure out a way to put, put it back in there to keep it safe or, or in a container. Uh, but that's the way it's gonna sit down in there. But what we'll do is uh, I don't wanna have to create like a mold base in here. And I don't think it's gonna self suspend because this thing weighs quite a bit. It's like, it's heavy guys. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to use the uh, the abdomen uh, spinneret holes here and we're going to uh, put some wire in here and we're going to self-support it above the base. So there will be a bracket that holds it at the top and then it will hold it and suspend it in place at the angle that I need it to be to pour the silicone mold. Uh, so what we'll do is we're gonna go ahead and create that bracket now, then I will lock in any details that kinda get messed up along the way. Uh, and then we will go ahead and do a wipe on uh, brush mold 
just a slight light, light coat of it to lock in some of those details that I sculpted into the item. And then we'll do the actual pour itself and we'll see how much of this is used. Quite a bit of it, I'm sure. Uh, but I'd rather do it right the first time than have to redo it again in the future. So sit back and enjoy as we jump into the studio here and we're gonna create a little armature system that holds or suspends it at the correct angle to try to avoid any air pockets. Let's get to it, guys. All right, you guys, so let's just jump into the content here. Now, you know that I'm not the master of all things, but I do like to show you my mistakes along the way, and I do make some mistakes along this process, so definitely stay tuned for those. What we're going to do is we're going to start off by measuring off our items here. We're going to start off by measuring off the spider abdomen and carapace, which is around 14 ounces overall, and we're also going to measure by weight the A and B of our Molestar 30. Uh, both of them measure exactly at 1.2 pounds and then together 2.4 exactly measured perfection So what we're gonna do is here. We're gonna begin the, the overall process of th Deciding how I really want to hang my item now in the intro you saw that I had these one cords, but they really didn't fit in there too good uh, I thought maybe this uh, two liter cut in half kind of worked out pretty good. Yay! let's go for it Let's just run with it uh, so I wanted to do kind of a hang method where I hang, I hung the spider into place uh, and in high, and thought this is a good process, right? You can kind of hang it down, let it suspend, and then you can just pour the mold, uh, silicone mold all the way around it. You can do a single pour and then I want to do a, like a cut apart mold where you can cut it on maybe one or two sides uh, and then you can just pop out the, the final effect. Uh, and what I wanted to, to do here with the two liter is I was wanting to use that armature wire kind of in like a like a hoop and loop fashion to kind of hold the two liter open while holding the uh, the spider sculpture uh, in the correct sh uh, shape or kind of angle. It was just too much weight. The, the item weighed too much for it to hold that efficiently. Uh, could you make something that wrapped around the top of a bucket or something? Then yeah, you could. But instead, I decided to try something a little bit different. So I was like, maybe I can twist these armature wires together and I can suspend it or hang it from above into position. All right, that'll work. We'll do that. So I decided to upgrade my bucket size again to this beautiful Dollywood. Thank you, Dolly Parton and Dollywood for this souvenir bucket. Of course, the silicone mold will not hurt the plastic in any way, but it would just give me something to kind of uh, put the spider in while I made the mold. Now, just remember that your mold kit there did show all of the facts and features and the how you know temperatures and all that stuff. So read your box before you begin any of these processes, and uh, always take everything that you hear on uh, YouTube as far as processes with a grain of salt, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and kind of lock in the final details here. I'm really nitpicking over this, and also you're about to see a jump in the scenery here uh, from my nice uh, black workstation into a white room. We are kind of keeping the overall stinky processes, any kind of chemical reactions down around the house and inside, just because at this point in time, my wife is pregnant with our third child. Super exciting, but we just don't want any of that kind of chemical reactions or uh, anything nearby. So this is at Nana's house, my mother-in-law's house, who is also an amazing crafter. I'm going to go ahead and lock in all of these little fine striations on the abdomen, as well as the carapace there, and a few on the actual coxa on the bottom of the spider. I'm going to go ahead and suspend this. This is being suspended, uh, you'll see a clip up here in the right hand corner here, above on my halo light uh, locking nut down into where the bucket is going to be. You can kind of see how it's hanging there. It definitely does what I need it to do. Locking in a few of those little last details where I kind of had to kind of shove those armature wires into position on the abdomen. And those are where the spinnerets will be when I get to sculpting those as well. Then we're going to jump into actually mixing the uh, Mold Star 30 Platinum Series Mold. I would like to thank Smooth On for making such an amazing product, and I look forward to using more of their products in the future. Uh, I know that a few of you that follow me already know, but I do plan to get into mask making. I'm really, truly excited about it. I am really good at making tumblers and 3D sculptures, but I really want to start at my hand at sculpting masks and making molds of those. So stay tuned for more kind of things like that in the future. So what we're going to do here is I want to do a brush on a uh, uh, base coat here over all of the nice little striation details. And I want to lock those in uh, by pressing the, the mold or the silicone into place with a brush. 
Uh, I'll probably do this for a lot of the items that I make, regardless of how smooth they are, just so that I can, I know for sure that, that there's no air bubbles between those little striations and little micro details, uh, and then the jacket of the actual silicone mold. I want to make sure that those details are there as much as possible, and the only way for me to, to know for sure is to push the silicone into those little nooks and crannies, uh, especially because the coxa and the sternum of the spider uh, is really kind of like in depth there. I want to make sure that the silicone gets that in there in an efficient manner. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure off uh, both sections, part A and B, 15 milliliters. You can see that this is very uh, uh, thick viscosity, uh, and it's very sticky. Make sure you have a popsicle stick nearby so you can kind of just clean up any drips around uh, the, the rim of the jar there. Jar, container, whatever you'd like to call it. We're going to get the next portion as well, uh, and then we'll go ahead and mix these together. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and grab the next portion here. And we're gonna do the same thing, 15 milliliters. I love the color of this. <laughs> it's, it's just really satisfying pouring this. I love the color. I know that they make a lot of different colors. I think that they do color code them depending on what, you know, what they're used for. Um, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. I, I, I might be wrong, I don't know. I look forward to using more of them and I'll probably become more familiar with all of the colors in the future. This is also very satisfying. Mixing two of the colors together in a little cup is just like, uh, I wouldn't say slime, but it's just, it's just something fun. Uh, it it kind of gives like a Tide Pod mixed vibes there in the bottom of that, that cup there. It's pretty cool. So this is a little bit of a process here if you let it self drip. I am not that, that, that patient at all. I'm very impatient. So I went ahead and used uh, my popsicle sticks that I have already set aside. Uh, make sure you add popsicle sticks to your kit there. And then uh, go ahead and scrape that out. Now I will say that during this process, of course this is not my studio, so I truly probably didn't have everything that I needed to do this, in pro this process the correct way. Uh, and throughout the process, I'm gonna mention when I make mistakes, just because I'm that type of dude. If I make a mistake, I'm gonna tell you that I made a mistake. And it also shows that over time, my process will become more refined and I will get better at this. Um, there uh, was another channel, another artist that makes silicone mo molds, and I love his channel. I can't remember his name. I will leave his channel in the description below, uh, and I, that way he has some kind of shout out to this video uh, because he, he is an amazing uh, uh, mold artist, uh, and I learned so much from him, and I, I probably could have implemented more of his techniques, uh, and I'll probably mention those later on in the video. So here I am using this 30 milliliters of uh, the silicone mold that I've mixed, and I'm just going to go ahead and press this into all of those little striations, nooks and crannies, all those little hair lacerations that I applied, uh, also in the ends of the coxa where those little ball joints are uh, for the legs to be added later. I want to make sure that I'm able to push this into all of those little nooks and crannies. Uh, along the way. This is a little bit of a process and I can actually feel it slightly thickening up as I go through this process. Um, and you just have to kind of hold the item the best that you can and just, just kind of just go for it. Uh, if it, it does drip a little bit, I did put a piece of paper below, but it's still kind of a messy process. Uh, but it is a necessary process if you want your silicone mold to have all of those refined details uh, that you painstakingly took to sculpt into that. And when I say sculpt, I probably spent 12 hours or more sculpting this portion of the spire. So, so this is one of those risks that I'm taking, you know, making a silicone mold of monster clay, which is technically not a solid item. It, it's a wax based clay. So I'm risking the overall sculpture by doing this. I'm just hoping that my overall basic knowledge of this is good enough to, to get by and to create a finished product, right? So what I'm doing now is in that one quart jar, uh, jar there, or plastic container, I am pouring out both parts. This is a process. I need to make me some kind of container holder that will hold this above uh, the, the container there and then that way it can self drip without me holding it. That'd be pretty kind of handy and that's what I was trying to do with that little, uh, little stick there a moment ago is prop it up so it could drain. 
it, it just didn't work out just because the lid of that container is so wide that it wouldn't work it wasn't happening also during this process i did not have a large paint stirrer you will need one um i would love to make one later on down the road that is coated in a silicone so that way i can just you know use it for other projects in the future and then just wipe it off so during the process of making a silicone mold you could make yourself a silicone paint stirrer stick or something that way that you could use it over and over again during this process, now I'm starting to apply the other portion of the, the mold mix here, and we're going to go ahead and mix them both together. And the reason I bring up the, the, the paint stirrer stick is because the only thing I had here were small popsicle sticks, which means that to get down in the nitty gritty of that container to mix this up, I actually had to stick my fingers into the mold a little bit and the silicone gets stuck onto the end of my latex gloves uh, it is a known fact and a warning in the kit not to use latex gloves because the silicone can technically stick to the latex gloves um, but I, that's what i have so I'm, I'm still using those those latex gloves here just trying to get out as much as i can of that container uh, I probably could have scraped out just a little bit more. So again, I'll probably make something to hold the containers up at an angle, uh, at least for an extra minute or two to drain, uh, maybe even beside each other. They're draining at the same time at the same rate. Uh, that way they, they don't have to add like two minutes on two minutes. It could just be two minutes for the total, total drain time. So, so we'll have to kind of see how that goes. Uh, you can see how there's still quite a bit coming out of that container. Uh, it's just part of the process. I'm going to have a little bit of waste. A little bit is going to be left behind, and that's completely okay. All right, so we're going to go ahead and finish scraping out what I can out of that container there. Uh, just try not to waste uh, any that I can't avoid, you know. There is some that's left behind in the container, and that's just part of it. So once I get both of those scraped out here, we're going to go ahead and begin mixing it. Uh, I'll repeat again. I'm starting to mix this with a little popsicle stick. This is not cutting it, you guys. If it was a very shallow container, yeah, this would work out with a little extra stirring. Uh, but this container is quite a bit too deep for that. Um, I make a mistake here in a moment, and I'm able to remedy that. But at the same time, this is just really sloppy of me. I should have thought ahead on this um, of what I would need, and but this is what I had. I had this little popsicle stick to stir this. Uh, in the future, as I said before, I'm going to add a large stir stick to my overall mold-making kit. Mixing this up here in a little bit of time-lapse. You can see I'm really getting kind of messy with it. Kind of reminds me of the overall consistency that Nickelodeon used to splatter people with. When they used to get slimed. <laughs> but that used to be good the green slime, of course. Pretty cool. Adjusting the camera here so I can try to get you a good angle here while using both of my hands here. Uh, I'm a one-man show here usually, as, as you can see. So I do apologize for jumping around, but I think I'm going to get you a good angle here. There we go. Now, the goal here is to kind of cascade it slowly over the overall item. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll kind of do a drizzle over the item. Uh, and I'm kind of like just going slow with it. Uh, and then hopefully it can rise a little bit of the bubbles that are in the mixture to the top as it pours. Uh, the thinner the stream as you pour, the better. Uh, I decided not to go super, super slow with this. And as I'm filling this up, uh, my, my dread is growing. I'm just like, oh no, oh no, you guys. Like, it's just not enough for this container. Now, I'm very new at the mold making process, so I'm not at the point where I can get a large container of it and make some big, huge mold. This is probably the size of the mold that I should have made. Uh, as thick as the walls are, uh, that's what I needed. Things are about to shift for the worse. You can see there also, because of the popsicle stick size that I had, I do have some white mixture in there. It's not mixed completely. And this is just not cutting it. I don't have near enough to cover this, and I don't have any more silicone. 
uh, uh, and mold kits nearby. So I'm gonna have to change things up. I have to put it back down in this little container here. Uh, and we're just gonna make do. I can always come back and do a second pour in a larger container and add more of the outside wall to this silicone mold if I needed to. But let's just kind of run with it and just see. Like I said, this is one of those those processes that once you start it, there's just no turning back, you guys. It's either, it's just all all in. So <laughs> I've already got the thing covered up here, and we're just gonna good go for it. I'm not willing to waste thirty dollars just because I make some simple mistakes along the way, and I hope that you would just kind of run with it and just do the best you can as well, or learn from my mistakes, you guys. That's why I'm kind of showing my mistakes. I think that sometimes people don't show the mistakes enough during their processes, uh, and then other people just fall into the same traps. It's a trap. Don't make the same mistake. So again, here we're running into another problem is the, the, the shape of the abdomen is uh, the, the coxa at the very bottom of the carapace are kind of running into the bottom um, uh, taper of that container there. So I'm like, hmm, what can I do? What can I do? What can I do? Uh, and at this point, I'm just kind of really, I'm really frustrated, you guys. You can see I actually picked the whole blaming thing up with by hand. It still has that layer of, of silicone on it, so it's holding all those details. But I flipped the thing upside down, and I, I, I just shoved the armature wire back into the, the, the top of where the fangs would be. And I'm just going to kind of lay this over the best that I can. Uh, it works it works guys it, it does capture every single piece of detail of of the overall sculpture so i'm not really too worried about that uh but i will try to kind of share my my thoughts throughout the the second part of the video here of what i think is going to happen with this this overall mold and how i'm going to have to improve it in the future you can kind of see that i'm trying to push that down quite a bit and i'm also trying to angle it backwards on itself so the actual carapace is like leaning towards the back of the mold you can see there also i have lost my gloves along the way so yes my hands are pretty sticky and nasty but you can kind of see that i did get it for the most part below grade uh, in the future what i plan to do is i plan to make a funnel pour that is added to the sculpture i'm going to do that from now on yes it's extra work but that's what i needed to Another thing that I'm going to start doing is because I was so kind of second guessing the container size here, uh, I do like the idea of having a container to keep the, the silicone mold in. Like this, these container, this container here in a moment will be the home of this silicone mold until and if I choose to change the overall outside thickness by adding another layer around the exterior of the mold, right? So if I want if I want to really kind of kind of strengthen it, I can add another layer on the outside. But for now, this is going to be its home, and this is going to be the shape that it holds, uh, and this is where it's going to be stored. So so here's what I want to do. I think that I'm going to go ahead and go with that other artist's way, and he usually makes his own containers to make mold from, and I'm going to start doing that. Uh, yes, it's a lot of legwork, but if you plan to use the same container or same process and keep the same uh, item producing over and over and over again long term, then then you're not wasting your time if you plan to reuse that container right so from now on what i plan to do here soon is i'm going to order a a, a a liquid wax kit and a kettle and i'm going to start making my own uh cardboard waxed containers for silicone molds yes it's a lot of legwork it's a lot of extra stuff a lot of gluing and shaping but that way i can get the exact shape of the silicone mold that i need uh, and I can make it to, to, to the absolute perfect size for the project itself. I'm not saying what I did here was wrong, but it could have been better. And if I had made it even just like maybe one centimeter wider, maybe two, maybe half an inch wider uh, in, in any way, uh, then it would not be so weak. There are a few spots on the exterior of the silicone mold that have uh, clay showing. So I could have gone a little bit thicker and that was my general goal when I went to, up to the, the popcorn bucket size is I wanted to kind of have a barrier around the exterior of the silicone mold. Okay, this is what I have to work with. I made some mistakes. It is what it is. Now I got the thing out and I'm trying to see if I can fit it back down into the same container again. I had to cut it down to the side to see if I can get the bleeming thing out. So I got it out. Yay! 
But now I can't get the thing back in again. Ugh. One thing after another, you guys. That's where the, the, the custom design container would really come in handy. So that is probably another skill set that I'm going to start to develop because I really do want to get good at silicone mold making. And I think that uh, creating your own containers for these types of things is a real important step that, that I think needs to be evolved. It may not be need to be something that comes right away if you're just doing this once or twice, but if you really want to like refine it, I think that would be the natural general next step in, in learning how to make really masterful molds. So I stated before that I'm going to make this a cut mold. Yes, I'm going to go ahead and begin cutting this uh, into pieces and uh, I'm going to do a cut down the side of it. In the future also, I will probably, um, by making my own containers, I will really probably think about where I want my cut lines to be in the future. Uh, this one resulted in two cut lines, so I kind of cut it into threes, so that one side kind of folds down and I can pull out the actual final effect uh, here in a moment. But yeah, I, I think that, I think a little bit of a thicker wall, uh, and then uh, a little funnel at the top for it to have a, a true pour spout instead of what I use here in a moment. It works, it's, it's okay, but I think that the funnel at the top uh, would really add a lot of uh, refinement to the overall silicone process. Kind of pulling this apart here. Now this is a process, so we're gonna go ahead and speed this up quite a bit. So the Moldstar 30 uh, Platinum Series Silicone Mold Kit, uh, this is a very thick, a very um, stout silicone. Uh, I, I thought that doing a, a cut mold on this silicone would be a little bit easier than it is. And I know they make different grades of silicone. I don't know if there's a, a different type of silicone that might be easier for cut molds or if this is just generally how tough it really is supposed to be. But overall, I, I'm really happy with the cut mold, and I think that it, when it's uh, all taken apart and it pieced, it's pieced back together, it's really sealing quite well. I think that my cut on the, the sculpture, on the side of the sculpture, could have been a little bit more refined, uh, but I think the final effect is quite, quite good overall. I'm really happy with it, uh, and like I said, I, I might come back and do another layer to intensify or strengthen the exterior of the silicone mold, uh, later on down the process, so I might have to redo this cut later, maybe a little bit, or at least to get you know through the exterior jacket of the the next pour to this portion of the cut mold. So maybe I'll have to do like a mark at the top or something. So we'll kind of see how that goes. But as as long as I'm gentle with it, I think we'll be okay. And also as long as I continuously use it in the same plastic container without trying to up the size, then I don't think that the, the pour, whether it be like a resin pour or here in a moment, I'm gonna do an actual uh, hot clay pour, it won't affect it at all. All right, so you can really see that the cut mold is really starting to come apart now. And I'm not going to cut it any more than I need to, but I also want to cut it enough to where it doesn't actually like like put strain on that lower portion of the cut. And I don't want it to rip on its own. So just put enough cut, cut uh, relief cuts in it to where it kind of keeps that from happening. Really taking my time right there to kind of really kind of nitpick until I can get the overall item out here. Now this is the master item. So the cleaner the item comes out without leaving any kind of residue behind, the, the logically the better the overall detail inside the silicone mold is. So as you remember in the first part of the video, we did do the brush on mold there uh, as, as a kind of a base there. We have some clay removal there, but it looks like it did hold the actual clay sculpture uh, kind of mold there. And I'm going to kind of push this out here. I'm going to be careful because I do want to kind of save this, this portion of the mold because I'm going to kind of probably use this as a general guide to do the legs. Uh, and those will be a separate casting video. So I hope to use some of the improved um, techniques and take notes and improve my processes in the next video. Look how great that is. Now I will say that the silicone did take a lot of the waxiness away from the clay, so it looks very chalky. It feels very chalky in the hands. 
uh, that's okay. Uh, it's probably something natural natural that happens uh, during the the mold making process, but uh, it, it's it's okay. There it is. There's our mold. You can see we have just a, quite a bit of debris left behind during the process. We have some breakage points, but the overall uh, look of it is quite good. Um, I do have a little bit of refining to do on the mold itself, but for the most part, it's pretty spot on. I'm very, very confident in how it performed and how it looks. But we're going to go ahead and do a small test. I will be honest, though, that this test doesn't turn out absolutely perfect, but it gives us just a general guide, and it also shows some mistakes that I made during this portion of the process, too. So I do plan to make these spiders out of a plastic urethane. I'll probably order that also off of Smooth-On. I don't know what type I'm going to do yet. Probably like a Smooth-On 300. Uh, I'm sorry, Smooth Cast 300, uh, which kind of uh, cures white, like a crystal white color. So I'll probably do a small video of casting those later on down the process. I'll probably do that, uh, the casting the body and the legs at the same time in the same video. And then that will be right before we start to move on to paint for that diorama. So a little bit of removal there. And you can kind of see I'm trying to seat this down into its home. This is where it's going to stay forever and ever until I try, I try to kind of expand the overall outside rim of the uh, uh, silicone mold there. Looking for the word. I was <laughs> having trouble there. Now I'm doing my best to kind of like squeeze it and kind of push it down. I do have a a, um, a vent hole at the very bottom so it can push air out, but it was not enough for it to seat properly down into the actual container. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do another cut relief uh, line here. I wish I had made the other cut line a little bit straighter instead of just like kind of throwing it on to get the silicone mold out of the container. And then I would have saved me $2 on the container. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just trying to get it to seat properly down in there. Uh, and I want to see if that cut relief uh, line on the container is enough to do that. I want it to seat properly down in there so that way I can apply uh, exterior pressure to the silicone mold to hold the cut lines in uh, their proper place while I'm uh, pouring anything. I'm going to use a few thick uh, gauge rubber bands here to hold it into place. I do like that these containers have a double uh, lip rim at the top and that's a perfect place for those rubber bands to kind of seat into. I'm also going to line that cut on the plastic container up with the opposite um, triangle corner of the relief cuts of the mold. That way if I do get any bleed out then it's not going to pour out of the mold, uh, the plastic container onto the desk or work surface. If it bleeds out, then I can just always remove that and then kind of cut that away with a, uh, a Dremel. Getting that in place. I'm really liking how this is looking so far. I'll probably put a piece of plastic wrap over the top when it's not being used, but I'm really happy with how this is turning out so far. Although I made a lot of mistakes during the process, uh, it's really giving a nice effect here. Now you can remember that I did cut a little hole at the very top where the actual fangs are going to be and that will be our pore hole for a majority of the things. Again, in the future I'm going to go out of my way to try to create a wax funnel or a clay funnel on each item that I'm sculpting. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and pour the monster clay uh, which I have melted down into the mold and we're going to see if we can get the overall same effect. Okay you guys, another mistake that I made here. Not only am I using monster clay for the first time, but I'm also using this mold silicone kits for the first time also. So I'm not a master of either yet, right? But you gotta start somewhere. Okay. I had technically washed this silicone mold with water, I don't know, two or three hours before I poured this. Big mistake. Wax-based clay and, and water in a mold where water cannot escape does not work out. And you're about to see why. It's so horrible, you guys. So the overall kind of theme that I have going on here, pouring the monster clay in, let it rapid cool, maybe put it in the freezer for it to, to, for it to kind of set properly, would give me an exact replica of my mold, right? It would have worked if I hadn't washed the mold. Stay tuned for that. <laughs> Thank you.
All right, so after about probably about six hours of it setting, I was like, hmm, well, it should be good enough to, to remove it, right? Technically, for monster clay, probably not really long enough. I probably should have put it in the freezer for a few hours, removed it, let it set at room temperature for a while before actually pulling it out. That would have probably been the best bet. And that way I would have to have an ultra like hard clay sculpture that I could remove. Next time, that's probably what I'll try. Again, new processes, new mistakes, learn from them. Removing the mold there, that turned out absolutely smooth as pie. Uh, and what we're gonna do here is we're gonna slowly start to pull this apart. As I said before, there was water droplets in the mold and you're about to see those, those come to a horrible fruition. That clay kind of funnel at the top broke free. That's completely cool. Overall, I'm seeing a really good sculpture here. And then here it is, it's slowly coming out guys. This is where I've become a little bit more forceful with it. Now when I do the urethane plastic, uh, probably the Smoothcast 300 on this, then I think it's gonna turn out quite a bit better. Uh, it, it left a ton of material behind in the silicone mold. So I, I do go ahead and I'm gonna clean this mold again, but this time I'm, I'm gonna actually use like a, um, not a degreaser, but like a, like a not a rubbing alcohol. I think I use Gant, uh, um, like a it's like a diluted um painting medium to clean that with a toothbrush but you can see the water droplets were left uh kind of residue pits behind that's that's my own fault uh and then also it's very soft because not only was it hydrated by the water droplets but it was also hot clay so they kind of intermingled and it kind of hydrated uh the wax material i feel like it's a, it's a lot it's a lot stickier and hot than it needs to be i just truly uh needed to have the the mold completely dry uh, without water droplets and also it needed to completely cool down before i removed it i was just impatient and and that's that's my own fault but overall when you when i look back it, it really did have all of the details that it needed there were no large chunks of clay that were missing so there's no like uh any small divots that are missing and you can see here that a lot of the overall details are there uh i was just impatient during the process and that's another thing that i'll have to improve as i work through the future mold making processes so i hope you all enjoyed this video we made a lot of mistakes Number one, make your own containers if you can. Otherwise, be patient and find something that really fits. Number two, make sure you have a stir stick that's big enough for the container and the quantity you're mixing. Number three, make sure you have enough material to pour the silicone mold that you need. Number three, make sure you support the item the best that you can to where you don't have to worry about it shifting. The hay method did work for this project, but I'll probably need to do two part uh, uh, silicone molds in the future for a lot of the projects. Uh, another thing that would probably help uh, is maybe uh, find a good way to clean your uh, silicone molds in an efficient manner. Uh, I really haven't found a method that completely really works efficiently for me to where I don't put a lot of strain on the actual silicone mold. Uh, you just have to take your time and be efficient with it. I don't know if using a, a uh, oil-based clay in a silicone one part mold is best maybe a two part where you can truly take it apart and clean it would be best for that but maybe not in something that i have here so if you're going to do plastics of course when it cures it wouldn't leave any residue behind because it ought to be solidified into a completely solid piece i hope you all enjoyed this video guys i hope you enjoy kind of seeing the comparison seeing the mixing processes again learn from my mistakes i'm going to definitely learn from them and i will see you guys in the next video of this uh goliath bird eater tarantula series where i will be sculpting the actual monster clay spider legs and then we will be making molds of them too so in two more videos i will be making more molds but we were going to do those uh, improved on what we have here 
Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys later. Thank you for watching. Check out all of these awesome videos.